Okay, we're going to be looking this time at an experiment on Boyle's Law. Uh, you might have probably watched the theory uh, lesson prior to this, and it basically says that the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional. I hope you can see that uh, neatly. So if I were to have, say, a, um, a piston, and I were to have this movable end, if I was to push that in, thereby making the volume decrease, the pressure in turn would increase because the particles would be bouncing around and bouncing off the sides much more rapidly, much more readily, and therefore increasing the pressure. So this is an inverse relationship, P is proportional to V. And very quickly, therefore, we can take out the proportional sign and we can simply say that pressure is going to equal to a constant divided by volume. Okay, I'm going to test that relationship to see whether that is true. Um, and I'm going to use such a thing like a piston, and I'm going to attach this end to a computer uh, with a pressure sensor. Um, this is obviously marked on the side because I'm going to use a syringe and it's going to be marked on the side how many milliliters I have. Now, of course, you should recognize that milliliters here and this relationship uses meters cubed. So therefore, when I do the results, it's probably worthwhile recording in milliliters, but then leaving a column available so I can make a conversion to meters cubed. In actual fact, we have 1,000 milliliters to one liter, and I have a thousand liters to one meter cubed, requiring one million, one times ten to the six milliliters to one meter cubed. So there is our conversion to bear in mind. Okay, so first things first, what am I changing? What is my independent variable? Well, I'm going to push this in and achieve a certain volume. So I'm going to drive this in and achieve a volume. So my independent variable is going to be the volume. And therefore, what am I measuring? Well, the computer is going to measure the pressure. So my dependent is going to be pressure. I'll just write that in full. So my table of results is going to look, remember we always start with independent on the left, so I'm going to write volume in milliliters. And then I'm going to write the pressure in, and interestingly here, the computer will give this in kilopascals. And then I'm going to want to leave a few more extra columns. One of these will definitely be the volume in meters cubed and another one is going to be um, well we'll leave a column at the end to do another bit of calculation which I'll explain in a minute okay but essentially remember uh, now ordinarily I'd write one two three times and get an average for it as well but the, the mere setup of the experiment means it's very hard to get something comparable between the three so therefore, what we're going to do is just have one column on its own. Let me show you the setup before we carry on any further. So I have my computer. And you probably see there a pressure on the screen. Now what's going on here is I have my gas pressure sensor. And here is my syringe. And as I move the syringe in, and decrease the volume, the pressure is increasing. As I move it back and increase the volume, the pressure is decreasing. So you can see that inverse proportionality. Now, all that I've got here is this is a syringe. It's nice and simple. Uh, it moves back and forth, measured in milliliters. Um, and I've got 20 down to five. So what I want to do is first of all, place it at a position, 20, and then with my gas pressure sensor, I then want to place it in this hole here, which measures the pressure. And you can probably see at the moment, air pressure is 104.2 kilopascals. 
Uh, that's about right, it should be about 101, but there are different variables as to why that's changing, and this might not be zero properly, but nonetheless, now I'm going to place this in, and that's my setup. I'll rotate it around a bit, and we have that there. So what often happens is you get two people to help with this, and you write down, first of all, 20 milliliters, and then 104.3. 3 is good enough. This one will keep bouncing, so to one decimal place is good enough. And then I'll probably decrease by, say, to 18, and I'll get 114. Then I'll decrease to, say, 16, and I've got 129. Decrease again to 14, 148. It gets harder to hold it because the pressure's building, so decrease it again to 12, and you've got to be steadier and hold it here harder to hold because that bounces around. We go down to eight, sorry, 10 first, which is two, one, six. Then I go down to eight, pressure's really building here. Down to eight, two, three, one. And I'll try and see with the sensor, no, the sensor's maxed out. So it doesn't matter if I continue going, it's maxed out. So what might be an idea is you go back through the video and you take each of those positions and write them down on the grid. So I'll move this back again. And if we copy out this table and put those values back down, and then I'll show you what we're going to do with those values in the next video. Okay, so here are our results. I took those from the, um, the screen um, and those from the screen, so our independent variable, our dependent variable, and then I converted 20 to that by using the conversion I talked about up here. In other words, I divided by 1 times 10 to the 6, because I know there's 1 times 10 to the 6 milliliters in 1 meter cubed. So this, in effect, I divided, in order to get from there to there, I divided by 1 times 10 to the 6. Then, in order to get from there to there, what I did is I put one over volume, which is quite interesting. So I just one divided by two times 10 to the minus five to order to get to this. And my last column here is volume times pressure. So I took the volume here, uh, the volume here times by the pressure. Let me do that one. And that gives me that value there. Okay. Now, what does this tell us? Okay, first of all, uh, we've placed the volume in a decent setup um, in meters cubed, which is a standard unit. And then we've placed one over the volume, which is quite interesting. Now, let me just draw us back to the original equation, uh, original relationship here. P is equal to one over V, or P is equal to a constant over V. So therefore, if I was to rearrange this and multiply through by V on both sides, this moves up. So PV is equal to a constant. And that is what I've done there. I've multiplied the volume by the pressure. And if the relationship's true, it should equal to a constant. And as you can see here, they're all equal to a constant all the way down. So that's proving the relationship one way, mathematically. Now, the other way we can prove it is by drawing a graph. And if we were to draw, remember my independent goes on the bottom, which was the volume in meters cubed. And my pressure, my dependent, goes along there in kilopascals. Then what I should get is something looking like that, because pressure is equal to a constant over the volume. However, you know that the, it's very hard to tell whether something is a curve or not a curve. It's much easier to tell whether something sits on a straight line. Hence, it's easier to um, confirm whether this relationship holds true, because you're not sure whether that's a 1 over v, a 1 over v squared, an exponential decay, etc., etc. So we still plot the pressure there, but this time I'm going to plot if I rearrange, take a look at this equation, if I plot the pressure is equal to k multiplied by 1 over v, then y equals mx plus c plus 0. 
In other words, the equation of a straight line. So I plot pressure on my y-axis. I plot 1 over v on my x-axis. And then, the because there was nothing there, I should get a straight line through the origin. So that is what you ought to plot to confirm whether this pressure is proportional to 1 over volume, Boyle's Law. And if you see in the link below, you'll see the results are there and the graphs as well. Brilliant.